Yeah, so uh, Antoine will give his uh, proof. Yes, okay. Um, so let's start with uh, defining tautological classes. I kind of already um, explained the second part yesterday. So let's, uh, uh, so let's, Let M be, uh, um, be the model space. So, in fact, for, for this part, I don't even need to be M to be anything. So, let M be some family of Higgs bundles. Then uh, um, on, on C. So that means that E has a, uh, so there is a, there is a bundle P e on, uh, so this is a bundle on M times C, right? And then you have this um, uh, E theta, E going to E and uh, omega of C. Uh, and then uh, we want to construct some classes in the cohomology of M. And then and we do the following uh, just to fix the um, fix everything. We we write the churn, turn, total churn character of E as a, and then times uh, I want to include the tot of C. And then I will write it as a sum of the uh, HK um, so it's a little bit by definition this the right hand side is this kind of sum. And then uh, I so this is this class now gives an h k of uh, n times c. And then one thing you can do you can decompose according to Kunet formula, or you do this uh, trick instead of psi choose psi in h i of c. Then you write chunk k chunk k uh, cut psi, and then you push forward along the curve. So you project to M of this, and then it is an H uh, uh, 2K plus I minus two of M. Okay, so this is the construction, uh, and this we call sign A. Of psi. Mm -hmm. So this is a construction of pathological classes. It, so you see that uh, you can do it on every for every family of Higgs bundles, but in particular you can do it for let's say for um, for stack of uh, uh, stable Higgs bundles or for some versions of this. And in any case, the subring generated by psi. So H uh, topological of M by definition is the subring of uh, the cohomology ring generated by this by psi. So this is one uh, thing we, we want to play with. There is another, so sort of I need I will need some concept of purity. Maybe uh, to sort of this is that doesn't have anything to do with six bundles. It's about X uh, let's say algebraic variety, smooth algebraic variety. Then we uh, choose, if we choose a smooth compactification, 
Snow's compactification. And then we look at the image. So the image of the restriction map from homology of X bar to homology of X. We call it the pure part of the cohomology. H uh, I should be more consistent with my indices. Should probably put it out at the bottom. Yeah, so this is a pure part of X, and and uh, you can easily check that uh, it does not depend on choice of the compactification. Doesn't depend. It, well, it can easily check depending on the resolution of singularities. Uh, on, on X bar. So this is a, a purity, and and then you can see that uh, the tautological ring is. Um, so it is a fact that our operations of push forward uh, and uh, and pull back and uh, multiplying by classes coming from from multiplying by pure classes they will preserve preserve purity. So this implies that in general the tautological ring is a subring of the pure pure ring. Okay. And we will kind of play with these two. We are going to play with these two motions. So, um, what is this? Is it M? M is, uh, as before, the, yes. this uh, kind of family of Higgs bundles. Okay. Or the stack of whatever you put uh, conditions on the bundles. Okay, so this then if that is general. Okay. Right. So um, now I'm going to proceed with uh, construction of KQ operators. And then I'm going to construct them for a particular particular choice of M. And, and here it's a little bit of a sort of technical thing. So, yes. so we have to fix um, and this uh, point on the curve. And we will consider. Consider uh, parabolic Higgs bundles. Um, so it means that you have a, a T is a um, bundle on, on C, a bundle on C. Then you take a um, Mm -hmm. Flag. Oh, yeah. Flag is the is the flag complete flag in the, in the file of e and p, and then theta. So this, to be precise, is called twisted parabolic. So uh, theta. Is a map from E to E tensored by omega one and then also twisted by P. And uh, condition is that theta, the residue of, of theta to P preserves the flag. So this is our M. And then we we choose certain open set. And now I'm going to say what is this open set. Uh, condition is that uh, first you have for each such thing you consider the spectral curve. 
So, so this is the curve. Uh, um, well, the picture is as follows: you have uh, uh, you have uh, your model is based on heat bundles with the heat map, and uh, fixing a fiber of the heat map means you choose uh, you fix the eigenvalues of all the uh, fibers of of theta in all fibers. Then this eigenvalues traced out a certain curve in the total space of uh, of the certain line bundle on the on C. And then that line bundle is precisely this uh, this fiber. So this spectral curve is curved inside this total space of this line bundle. And we ask the spectral curve is um, um oh, I can't see. yeah is 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 reduced and irreducible. Reducible. So this is called the elliptic loss. Okay. And then we want to put some other conditions. And also we, we force the uh, residue of uh, theta P has distinct eigenvalues, is, is regular, semi simple. So this is the um, um, this is the space of bundles we will look at, and this is this open space can be sort of a, some open subset inside the um, some space of of stable parabolic twisted. Parabolic bundles, and uh, but the compactification depends on the choice of some stability condition. You can uh, choose once you have parabolic structure, you can uh, you have a choice of stability conditions. So this is now partial compactification. Yes. And depends on the stability. But the original set M open uh, turns out that um, all Higgs bundles in M open are um, are simple, right? Right, this is right, yeah. So, uh, uh, oh, because this spectral curve is uh, irreducible, any Higgs bundle for this, um, uh, for this spectral curve does not have any proper sub bundle because the sub bundle would have spectral curve and some. Uh, some component of, of that spectral curve. That's why the, this open set completely belongs to the set of stable, uh, to the monthly space of stable bundles for arbitrary in terms of stability condition. This is our M open. And we are going to deal with, uh, we will consider, consider uh, the tautological. I mean, topological of the same open, and also we have the pure. And then we have the hot the, the, the total homology. So uh, now I was going to construct the Hick operators. So on this uh, open model space, um, there is no problem in constructing Hick operators because uh, 
because everything is is automatically stable. The problem defining a AK operators on usual modular space was that that uh, the modification can fail to be stable, but here is everything is every, everything is fine. So we have uh, this sort of a uh, diagram. Um, and here we need to fix the degree. So D stands for degree. So we have uh, this one. And then we look at certain correspondence. Now like this, so this now will parameterize uh, things as before. So it is a point E, black, theta, and um, yeah, and um, E prime, which is inside E, uh, such that modulo E, the quotient is a skyscraper shift. So it is a lens one. Is a skyscraper. It's equivalently say E prime is colons one. Is a colons one such. Okay, and then uh, this uh, map is uh, E F and theta. This arrow and this arrow is E prime. All right, and and theta has to preserve. I forgot theta restricted to E prime, so just to preserve the just to go E prime and zero on the one. Okay. What was the letter for the point P? Right P. Yeah. So this is a. And therefore, you can also restrict everything to E prime, and then you get E prime. You get uh, theta, of course, and then you can ask what is the flag, but the flag is completely determined because, well, if you think you, the flag is just the choice of the ordering of the eigenvalues of theta. And the eigenvalues of theta restricted to this prime are the same. Because the spectral curve is actually the same. Yeah. So, um, so you have this diagram. And then I can define a map, which I call T K of uh, Xi. The Xi was a class in HI of the curve. And this is a map from the cohomology of. Of this um, denominator is open and to uh, to this for D and um, uh, so how it is defined? You first pull back along the first arrow, so so it's given by standard alpha to pull back uh, along the first arrow. Now you have cohomology class on Z, which can be singular, doesn't matter if it is singular or not, or then you multiply by the by the fundamental class of Z. And here I have to use certain virtual fundamental class, which I will just say a few words. But then I can multiply by, uh, so what else can we do? There is a map from Z, Let's call it pi three z z to the curve, which is given by measure reading of the point where we are doing the modification, where the skyscraper shift leaves. This is uh, so we can multiply by pi three of this psi. And furthermore, furthermore we can. Um, Use the fact that we have um, so on every point of Z we have this skyscraper shift, and it's uh, corresponds to one dimensional subs one dimensional space 
sitting on the, some point of the curve. The reading of the one dimensional space gives you a line bundle. Uh, and we will multiply by C1 of that line bundle to the power k. Okay, so this is uh, what is the most general thing we can do here. Yeah? Okay, corresponds to the power of this line bundle and uh, psi enters as uh, you, you can use this class in the curve. The line bundle was uh, uh, on Z. This was this is Z here. Yeah, this is a reading of the one dimensional that five the, the I don't know, this fiber of the skyscraper shift that or you can say reading uh, E mod E prime. Is a one dimensional space. What? So Z, again, Z is this uh, correspondence uh, when we're trying to do these triples for for triples. Uh, okay. um, and this, this. So this is a very standard way to find. Take a correspondence is a little bit maybe more general. Usually you don't consider this. C1 here. So if there's an I and there's a K. I is uh, here, yeah, it's uh, So Xi can be one, it can be gamma, gamma, one of the gamma classes, or it can be the omega class of the point. Okay, so it's determined by the choice of Xi. But what is K again? K is this. It is here is the power, oh, yes, okay. the power of the line bundle I'm going to use. Okay, and then so these are well defined operators, and they act on act on the whole cohomology of of the of the model of the open model space. And why I doesn't appear in the notation of pk? Ah, uh, yes, t k. Okay. is inside yeah, each other. Yeah. So the virtual class. You can uh, see it uh, quite easily by looking, thinking about the Z as being a zero set of, of certain section of a vector bundle on something nice. So first, you can look at all E primes. Mm -hmm. This is some projective bundle over uh, M open times C. So it's it's really nice. It's just a projectivization of a vector bundle. And then on it, once you have choice of E prime, you have to fix this, you have to use this condition that theta is strictly to E prime is preserved. And the failure of this is measured by by certain uh, section by a map from uh, from from the fiber of uh, uh, E prime to so the E prime corresponds to a subset of a fiber of E. And you restrict theta to that subspace and you measure if you land again in E prime or not. That's give this is some section of a vector bundle. And so generally, if you have some variety to describe as a zero set of section of a section of a vector bundle, it has some natural virtual fundamental class, which does not have to be the fundamental class. If if the dimensions are nice, if everything is transverse, then it is exactly that. The C itself, but sometimes it can be something else. Um, kind of measures this multiplicities or, or measures some excess intersection. Right. <laughs> so the, you have a condition on this uh, spectral curves, no? curves. You have to check that. You, you Here, the, the spectral curve does not change. In and both E prime and E, and then yeah, yeah. Degree, degree. they agree because the eigenvalues don't change. Yeah. Uh, so the degrees. Yeah, the degree change. Yeah. But I also, sorry, and this is naive, but yeah. I thought you said that these bundles were simple. They are not simple. I, I meant they don't have proper sub bundles. But so E prime is not a proper sub bundle. 
it's not a it's a sub sheaf, but it's not as as strict as sub bond. Yeah, it's uh, what's the technique? So a sub bundle means in, in every point you have a subspace and you have the same dimension. But here the you have in one point subspace of smaller dimension. It's not in the same category. Yeah. There is so the inclusion is not in the category of the bundle but of sheet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but for instance, if you have a <laughs> line bundle, if you move the sub bundle, you have no array. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't it's want to say. Yeah, yeah. And another way to say it, uh, it doesn't have sub bundles of lower, sub okay. of lower rank. So this is this was definition of KK operators. And now let's uh, formulate some results. So, so theorem uh, is that um, this operators. So first, this th these things preserve preserve the tautological summary. Okay. And second is that uh, on uh, direct sum of, of all the pathological rings of this MD, when you now change the de degree from uh, minus infinity to infinity, so we have an action of uh, this trigonometric one, tender to the cohomology of C. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, where, where uh, D zero M psi is given by psi M, and D one M psi is given by T. So you will think, let's draw the picture. Picture, maybe. Yeah. Okay, this is the first is just that they preserve the tautological ring, and second is complete uh, determination of relations. So we can think about this like there is sitting here psi zero, psi one, psi two, and then here is it's t zero, t one, t two, and then sort of this picture is. This quadrant is populated by other operators. So this is maybe something like um, this is something like D three three. Yeah. So the the relations of trigonometric uh, of this trigonometric algebra show you that uh, there is straightforward it is straightforward to get to to write every d in, every d in terms of uh, size and t's. So the second row n is bigger than zero, and the thing is independent of n. Um, second row. So d n n. Right. In general, it's, it's populated by d m n. So four three. No, no. You have the definition d zero n is something and d n n is something. That is D1. D1. Oh, D1. I, I thought it was a thing. Yeah. Okay. D1. Okay. And then, so how do you prove this uh, theorem? It's not that surprising, but not so good. So, oops. So the idea is, I will say this. So you can do two things. One thing is the commutation relation between T's and Pathological classes. So first, you prove that that uh, so that psi m 
So what will be the relation uh, in the Um, look, this one is d zero m. This is d one m. So you're supposed to take the determinant which will be m, and then it will be t, and then uh, it is m of n minus one, right? Okay. So this is one of the relations we we have in the trigonometric algebra. And what does this relation mean geometrically? Let's go to the picture. So I will, you will just see from the picture. So this Z is sitting here. And imagine what happens if we first multiply by some term class of some tautological bundle here. This is some term class depending on the prime, right? Some kind of polynomial in term classes. Right? So we pull it back here. And we get this polynomial in from E prime. But we know that E prime is E minus that skyscraper sheet in K theory. So you can simply write this chunk class characters, the difference of chunk characters of E and this extra thing. Now the chunk character of E comes from here. But by projection formula, you can instead first push it forward and then multiply by, by some corresponding class here and then and the extra stuff comes from the map to, to the curve and to and this line bundle which uh, we have before L so um, once you think precisely calculated then you get the formula so this is basically just projection formula so use uh, that e prime is e minus uh, the skyscraper, let's say it like this, and projection from on. Okay, so this is this um, Now, second step. Now you, you imagine you want to apply T n to arbitrary polynomial of psi classes. You already have a commutation relation. You can sort of move them out one by one. And in the end, you will have to apply it to, to one. So second thing is to compute Tn psi of one. Then what is it? Let's go back to our diagram. So we have one here, and we pull it back and get one. And then we have multiplied by this virtual fundamental class. So here's the formula. This vanishes. This we don't need to take. We simply have to take the virtual fundamental class, multiply it by something, and push it forward. And that is uh, completely, completely computed in, in the theory, in the framework of cigarette classes. This is the general thing. Like you have a uh, some projective bundle, you have some section um, of some vector bundle on it. And you have you multiply by some power of the tautological line bundle and you push it forward. That's uh, has a explicit formula. Okay, using segregate process. And what we get is explicit polynomial in psi. Is explicit. I don't want to write it down, but it's actually quadratic. Some kind of sum over depending on n, of course. Okay, so once we have these two computations, we in principle know how to apply t to any polynomial of psi classes. And so this gives us a way to write. So any, um, yeah. So now there are two several ways. I mean, for instance, you can uh, define these operators acting on a Fox space. On a, like, you can define uh, these T's 
and some vertex operators on the space of polynomials on this polynomials in these variables so I keep the sign. And then the non-trivial fact would be that they preserve all, all relations. Homology, but so compatibly with um, with action on on the tautological ring. And then check all the relation there, for instance, explicitly. Uh, I'm try that. Uh, okay, so let's. Okay, so so you see that uh, this theorem now from well, allows us to. To compute them, so we have we know everything on the tautological end, okay? But there is also pure part of the cohomology which can be bigger than and then the next. So, so it turns out that uh, by Markman's argument, it's a Markman theory. It will tell us that that uh, the pure. So I don't know. That I think this is somehow not noticed by Markman and by others. That he, he in his argument he has to construct some compactification. Then he kind of there is some strange thing. But what he in the end proves is true on this exactly or. But the pure, but basically, what his argument proves it is that pure part equals to the tautological class. The tautological, the pure part of the moduli space is generated by tautological classes, even if the moduli space is open and maybe some more complicated conditions. But this is always true. And here we have one catch, so there is one up to one thing, one problem, because we are dealing with the parabolic moduli space, uh, and the original argument is about the ordinary moduli space. Parabolic moduli space. So and then uh, resolving that problem would tell you that you have to extend the class, the set of tautological classes by something we didn't include before. So we need to enlarge um, this thing by adding um, these classes that come from the uh, flag. This is what I have one question before you. Uh, yesterday you were mentioning the non parabolic case. Why did you introduce the parabolic? So we we'll prove everything on the parabolic case first. Ah, ah. Only afterwards uh, we can. We will. So you use the parabolic to deduce the non parabolic? Or? Yes. Yes. And this is also true in the case of Mauli and Shen's proof. Uh -huh. They work on this exactly the same uh, open moduli space. See, this is very simple not to repeat for the other shapes of the parabolic size. It's the previous one. No, no. unfortunately. So we can when we add this C1, so um, we can actually somehow modify uh, so we just replace uh, replace the cohomology ring of the curve by some kind of something slightly larger where we um, 
Um, so we have ordered this thing, but then we add uh, some classes. We call them omega one, omega n. So this is just the cohomology of that function. In H2, modulo that omega equals sum of omega i. So I don't know, exactly know. It's probably the cohomology of some kind of orbifold curve of the inertia stack oh, over the orbifold curve or something like this. Uh, so you kind of, uh, to, to keep the same notations, you, you just enlarge the string by the space here. Then the whole, the set of, the set of relations, everything works. And uh, also T, so then T, uh, I think psi K of this omega I will be something like C1 of this quotient. Maybe up to some constant here, and then TK. Um, you have to then define what is TK, right? And this is something which is uh, certain. There is this case. There's a morphism between M D minus one and D, and this is given by. Uh, doing Hecke modification in the over the points of P. So the, um, the eigen spaces for the residue of theta here uses one dimensional subspaces where you can do modification. So there are, and there are like so the, this uh, identifies this for this two modulus spaces for different degrees, but uh, there are there are k choices possible to make. So, no, what is this? What is this? Mean? No, eyes. And then uh, times uh, followed by some sort of C one. Some, something like that. So it's again some explicit. And then, uh, so algebra extends. So extend to uh, action of this uh, trigonometric H2, now tensored by this. Uh, by this uh, new thing, which the extended pitch homology of C, which we let's call it H C tilde. So now we have that. So conclusion is that uh, this algebra. This algebra acts on the direct sum of uh, of a D and the cohomology of pure now. I can put it here yeah. of um, an open D. And there is one uh, right. I forgot one thing that you have one extra variable here, which uh, you can. Just think that instead of taking this variety, here you take into account the C star trivial C star action by, yeah, so it's a parameterized, it's not just. Yeah, so the, the actual every vector bundle E has a C star worth of automorphisms. So in principle, if you look at the stack representing the corresponding factor, it has this component. Yeah. This uh, operator Ti or Tk is uh, the general kind of version of the double algebra. Some version of, of what? 
I mean, it seems to me that uh, it looks like some kind of version of double outputs. Double. 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 Ah, yes, right, yes. Usually it's called W, sometimes it's called W okay. This. So, but wait, uh, this and these, these are their isomorphic and it's very really individual. Yeah, they are. So, all the pure parts, uh, it's not related to some one and the other. No, just uh, so. Just some part of the cohomology coming from compactification. And they're all the same, right? They're all isomorphic because they're all isomorphic modular spaces for different D's. Right, but they, I mean, in the sum, each term is, has no connection with the, with the others. No. no. But you know that the Psi, they preserve the degree, but the T's, they change degree by one. That's why I need to take the sum. Mm -hmm. And then some of the operators in the y, why, why do you put the y there? Well, it's as I'm saying, and to be if you're really careful, then you will see that everything there is this y. <laughs> you need the y. Why and why is but why is it something like psi of one or omega? I think, yeah. Because there, on the module space, there is no canonical choice of the tautological bundle. You have kind of choice up to tensoring with some arbitrary line bundle. And once you take into account dependence on that line bundle, you get some Y, some parameter. Okay, now, um, right, where I am now? Okay, so now we have action of certain algebra on this pure part. The next step we do, we do, so the degeneration, degeneration from from H two trigonometric to the rational one. C tilde. So C tilde is not really a curve; it is something whose we think of its cohomology as uh, the cohomology of C, and then with extra clusters in H two. So you see that the point P becomes N copies of our point, but they are all this. But the sum is again the point. So the degeneration to rational, this is some our formal procedure. And it uses the fact that uh, if you look at the sequence uh, psi n of psi, it basically depends polynomially on uh, on n, roughly depends. So uh, is you can write it as a, a y n times polynomial of n y to the n times polynomial. This is a uh, um, operator valued polynomial. And then it sort of, uh, you will see what it does to the whole. So then you imply that D, you check that DMN psi is, um, so you, you have this DMN, which is from uh, M uh, D to M D plus M. But then you, so first thing you have to do, you can you have to identify them somehow and you can use the operator T zero omega uh, minus M. So T zero omega is turned out to be invertible and uh, you Take this sequence, and this now depends polynomially on M. And, 
and then taking the coefficients of that polynomial, you get some other operator. So this now I have to, to distinguish. I will call this operators trigonometric. So once you take coefficients of these polynomials and, and this is the right thing to do if you remember last of yesterday how the operators in trigonometric and generation should be related by exponential. So uh, we get some operators DM and rational. And then it acts. So theorem is then then that H two rational tensor with the uh, homology of C tilde now acts on um, cohomology of of a fixed module space, but now with two extra variables. And and uh, in this uh, identification, D uh, zero M is the same as uh, D trigonometric, and this is our psi classes. And okay, a pure part. Of the world. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, yes. So now we have some algebra acting on uh, on the pure part of some moduli space, and we want to uh, to relate it to some other. Uh, so one proposition is that. Uh, that the the pure part D equals to the image number number So we consider cohomology of a stable model space. This uh, that is S, and this this is parabolic. And we look at the cohomology of M D. So we'll consider this map. And of course, because uh, right, so, so this uh, is known to have pure cohomology because of the C star action and uh, everything contracts to the zero fiber. Uh, on the other hand, uh, right, we have this one. So, so, so this map has to pre preserve um, uh, pure part. So we have this, and the claim is that this is restriction is an isomorphism. Corollary is that uh, this algebra, maybe I can call still done. This is now what's called this one just dissertation acts on on the corresponding on this one. Then uh, now we look at the so I'm supposed to prove P equals W conjecture. And here is uh, so another proposition it identifies the P filtration. Uh, so the first I have to show that uh, there is a perverse filtration on the pure part. Of, of, of the cohomology, but um, 
this is actually not so difficult to deduce. So remember that uh, Tamash uh, explained how to get the perverse filtration in the compact setting. Uh, then you, by restricting to the, op, um, so the cohomology of the compact space uh, subjects, yeah, restricts to the cohomology of, the, of any open subset, uh, the pure part. Therefore, you get some filtration on the pure part. And then you can check that that also satisfies hard left sheds, for instance. There is somehow series. So, uh, and then there's, so there is this, we have um, perverse filtration on the pure part. So, of the of the open Wendley space, and it matches. Then we prove that it which matches uh, one on on this empty S twisted and parabolic. And and moreover, so we have this operator in T K is identified as a span of I identifies for for the operator D one 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 and where uh, I was so called K. So Maybe I can talk about some details later about how to see this. Basically, there is a cell two. The definition of MD, you know, status equal. What is it? Yeah, here it means S is stable. But in the MD, that's not stable. Here? No, the other one. In the open. Uh, and it was to talk about MD for the restriction of isomorphism. And a star of MDS with the parabolic and yes, star MD. MD with. But it was uh, automatic, it was in fact by the definition. Ah, they okay. the mm -hmm. in the numerical division. The whole stable is applied by the show is just one. So you mean this MD open here? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is a stability position. Now, all, all, all everything in this open part is stable for arbitrary stability. Oh, no, it's between the four rings all the time. Right, yes. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, I'm confused with uh, in the MD, you have in the definition, you have a parabolic, uh, it's not twisted, but it's constant. Yeah, yeah, it's all the, the same here. Yeah. It's twisted and parabolic. Parabolic. Ah, okay, here. okay. So MD is open in uh, your stable parabolic twisted parabolic. Yes, yes, yes. So we so kind of which one of those letters is I? I can't see D what? Here? Yeah. D I I guess this is for D one one one. These uh, letters are all one. But they're all ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is, if you remember, it corresponded to the H generator of SL2. So that. So uh, what's the I? I less than equal K. Yeah, but I in space means what? Uh, this operator has some I in space. Every operator has some I in space for some I in values. If it's I in the return of finite dimension. Yeah, I. I I I I say in value. So you have you have them in order. Oh, they are all integers. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. All I get I've to this operator. So I is the eigenvalue. I is eigenvalue. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> so okay. And then let's see what can we do. And then you can in particular see that polynomials in 
since uh, since multiplication by psi classes uh, change the eigenvalue by just changing the ending. Well, controllably, then you see that this implies P equals W for for MD stable twisted and parabolic. Then you have to uh, restrict to to MD stable parabolic non twisted, which this con means that the condition given by the condition to so closed subset determined by the condition that residue of theta is the important. Okay. So it turns out the restriction map on the cohomology is an isomorphism by a lemma from, from the paper. From, from, for that, ask them. So, <laughs> because of this is direction in this particular case, the cohomology of the MD stable twisted and parabolic is cohomology of MD stable parabolic. And then we prove that we check that uh, P filtration agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the next step. And then finally, we are in the position to relate the, uh, you look at the cohomology and look, look at the um, uh, non parabolic, but just stable. And we have a uh, stable and parabolic. And then there is some space where you have uh, called F. So these two spaces are related in the following way. Here you have theta has nil potent residue. This is a subset where residue is zero. So this condition residue is zero. And this, but then it is just uh, uh, ordinary Higgs bundle plus a flag in the fiber. So this is a flag variety, relative flag variety. So, uh, and then you analyze the full uh, push in this diagram. And you prove that, uh, so with this way, the map is given by multiplying anything by a product of uh, I less than J C one of if I expand this one okay and this map is given by uh, anti symmetrization with respect to S N action. And um, sort of this uh, lets you identify this cohomology as a direct sum on here. And then we have to do some more work about the perverse equation. And then prove that so, so the cohomology of M is C sits in the homology of M stable parabolic as a direct sum. Compatibly with the perverse equation. And then you get P cross W on the on the usual space. And that's the end of the theorem by, uh, by us. So so I, I don't actually I I mean this is true. Observe. 
And that's uh, maybe that's it now. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a little bit after a break or mm -hmm. yes. All right. Uh, yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then uh, let's take a break. And uh, maybe we can clap now to the group. And there will be a little bit more of. I'm calling you back. So it's your time. Um, so we say uh, 11 30. And there should be coffee of the same kind. So they're in the same place. <laughs> you the same place. <laughs> yes. um, no, no. Okay. The same is on the second, the second part. I already uh, formulated the first. Um, <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Let's call it exercise. Uh, so, a uh, category of such things, which are called Lecture structures, where this is a vector space, F is a filtration, increasing filtration, and omega is an operator which of degree plus two. And suppose it satisfies this Lecture property that. This is an isomorphism. This is precisely like in the marsh stock. Then this category is a billion. Now, generally, when you have category when something like vector space and filtration, it's usually not a billion. Because the filtration induced on the image from uh, one side it can be different from the filtration images for any map images as a core is a quotient and at the same time is a sub and when you induce filtration from the quotient can be different from the one induced as a sub uh, but in, in some situations for instance this is the category of mixed host structures uh, another example of this. And then this is also like this. I, for me, it's a kind of a kind of small miracle. And on the can you describe that in the composable objects in this case? They just explicitly There will be, there may be even some. Uh, no, the problem is that if you take any omega like this and then add arbitrary uh, map of um, which sends fi to fi plus one, you add generic uh, map like this and then I don't see how you can. Probably generic one will be decomposable. Uh, uh, what did you write? The central associated graded for F. So it sends uh, this triple to um, to. Mm -hmm. So you have, you have this uh, feature on both sides for the W and, and P. Uh, so this is uh, it generally holds for uh, in the context of a map of algebraic varieties like in Tamash and you have relative um, you have a projective morphism with some relative ample class and the perverse filtration gives you such an object such a difference. <laughs> 
Sorry? And for the way it's based on the large variety signal. Uh, by you mean by my proof? Yes. yes. Okay. But there it is a little bit even more. It's... Can you just uh, uh, say that before, but uh, I don't see uh, how you can deduce from the paper that we use from this uh, filtration and the uh, I'm not talking about the speaking, but. Uh, okay, I will talk about it later after this. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Well, oh, okay, maybe then you should. Uh, so the corollary of this is that that if you have uh, some relative context, then that a pure part of the cohomology if you have u going mapping to a uh, projective. Then star of u pure uh, and then perverse filtration is intersected with the pure part and um, some relative ample class. They satisfy is a left shift structure. Mm -hmm. ah, just probably can deduce it from from theory of perverse sheaves using the weight. I don't know. Am I do I understand correctly that the way weight filtration interacts with with this uh, decomposition yeah, is uh, clear. So pure part would just correspond to some part of the decomposition. So mm -hmm. I guess. I guess so. Yeah, I mean, okay. So, <laughs> so this is we this was is used to uh, define the perverse filtration on the on, uh, on the the open model space. Yeah. Another thing. Now let's um, let's answer the that question. That there is another lemma. So suppose mm, just to, mm. Suppose SL2 acts on cohomology of some of this. So that SL2 is uh, E, F, H, right? And the three generators with uh, E with F. Uh, Send acting uh, as follows H uh, of degree zero and E of degree two and suppose E is is a multiplication by ample class. Then 
PK is a uh, span of uh, I eigenvalue for, for H, where I is less or equal K. Mm -hmm. So you have this left structure. And suppose you can, in some way, to extend into SL2 action compatibly with the filtration. And then it forces the filtration to be completely determined by, by this. Yeah, so for instance, It is a yeah okay. I mean maybe you know that uh, f if, if if you have an operator f uh, there exists a unique filtration satisfying some problems. If given the important operator on the vector space, the filtration that Tamash wrote down. Uh, is uh, actually unique filtration, which is satisfies certain properties like this one and uh, symmetry properties that uh, it has a, gives isomorphism between complementary uh, graded pieces. So that completely determines the filtration. Okay, but I mean, maybe it's better to. Proof. Uh, proof is that on let's see on the associated graded. This we have now two SO two actions. Yes. So we, in particular, we have uh, we have, uh, and moreover, wait, let's see. So we're able to actually Right. Yeah, I was mixing up the notation. Here are some. In the associated graded, you have two SL2 actions. One coming from, uh, because of the hard Lefschetz theorem, coming from E, right? Another one, coming from this SL2 action. And then uh, you check that the difference, so you have some E, F, H and E prime. So E is the same. E F prime and H prime. Now take the difference and then notice that the trace Nice. Okay, now I have to remember that. Look in the paper, I guess. There was some clever. So the difference H, H prime now commutes with 
with uh, with E. Right, and with E and with uh, with H, because yeah, because H P K is in P K, therefore. Uh, H preserves on each graded component, so it commutes with the other grading operator. So this, and so it implies that uh, H minus H prime commutes with both SR2 actions because SR2 action is completely determined by just E and H commutes with, with both actions. And then somehow when he was using that the tray that H is a commutator of E and F, H prime is a commutator of uh, E and F, H prime is a commutator of E and F prime, and conclude that the trace of H equals trace of H prime equals zero. And then somehow on the other hand, you can see that the trace of yeah, I forgot. There is an equality between eigenvalues of H and H prime. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I have to check. Well, anyway, sorry, that's the that's the lemma. So it's not sufficient to have SO2 action for some kind of class. But if that class is an ample class, then it's okay. Then it's sufficient to completely determine the perverse filtration. So you have the same story on the W side? And what makes you find huh? you have the span of the eigenvalues uh, of the H and there it is more kind of just a more uh, much easier situation. On the W side, we have W side. We have that splitting of, of the Weight filtration by the Hodge filtration. So, because everything is state, state implies that the F, the Hodge filtration splits is opposed to the weight filtration. To the weight. And therefore, there is a canonical decomposition. So the cohomology. Um, of course, there is also conjugate to the Hodge filtration that gives you another splitting. But uh, then you can also say that it is filtration with two, two splittings, or equivalently, a filtration and certain unipotent, unipotent operator, which sends one to mm -hmm. <laughs> um, So, well. So this becomes a direct sum of this uh, some graded pieces, like Fk would be 
So, I should put two eyes plus some shift. For instance, if it was if it was pure, then it would be of k, and then that would be two k. Oh, that's fine. Okay, that seems correct. And then, uh, and then if you modify the class, uh, so we have this class uh, psi two of one in my notations in H two in F in W four in H two. And we can choose it to be in that, uh, So this in, in general, so this is just H2, and this has the following parts. It has F2 uh, intersect W4 and F1 intersected W2. So uh, this, you choose a representative which belongs here, which is modified by the uh, project here. So let W be the projection to of this guy. Now you have a graded vector space. You have a degree two operator and it satisfies hard Lipschitz property. Therefore, there is a unique extension to SL2. So we have now grading plus degree two operator. And uh, no, knowing that, so by my result, it satisfies. Uh, we have uh, W. D plus y plus y minus one two d plus two i two d w d plus minus one is uh, d i and isomorphism. Does there exist a unique SL2? And so, uh, how to uh, the uh, dimension of these sub quotients? The dimension of this sub quotient. Yeah. So this is like if you I have two actually I can say two of them. You have two a priori expression of the same space. You have two SL two actions, mm -hmm. one from P and one from W. Why is this sub quotient they have the same dimension? Well. It's not quite. Wait, wait, wait. One from P, one from W. I don't. Uh, are you asking about like we already have that P equals W, right? P equals W means that the subportion is the same of the side. Yes. 
Uh -huh. So how do you deduce from C set to action that the set function will be the same on both sides of motion? So wait, 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 wait. Are you mentioning the shender result? I said the shender result. The shender result, but does it say more than that? Well, this shender result is just yeah. saying that uh, it's just. It doesn't say anything non, non trivial after I have this decomposition. Wait. So there is this decomposition, it is multiplicative. And uh, I know that every psi class, every class psi belongs to some part here plus uh, lower lower pieces in the composition. Um, I said it's kind of automatic that Ah, okay. Right. So you you write something like this. You write psi k of uh, psi, and you know that it is in. It has uh, in f in w um, two two k, right? And then but this has W two K intersected FK plus W two K minus two intersected F it's minus one and so on. Mm, okay, so I think. By Shen, so Shenda is saying that this part, right? In the original, okay, in the original Shenda thing, thing, he says that this class belongs to here. Okay. Mm -hmm. He proves that it is just pure weight. And uh, in general, so the point is that. You have to show that you can construct this class by using kind of k uh, holomorphic k forms, and that uh, you can play. So you have to. After this method, like this is everything we like the stomatological classes. Right, yeah. And they start from the same. You just have to have some show that they, you can you you can generate everything by classes of pure weight. Yes, but the universal classes generally. Yeah, but something could go wrong in this class. There's something here, and then something new here, and this something new cannot be killed by other than those four classes. <laughs> because the general truth is that it's not there. And then, it, yeah, imagine if it, leads, it has some component here and some other component here, and you cannot kill this component. Yeah. Then, then your component is killed. So you have to construct this class explicitly in then that construction to see that you're only using holomorphic k-forms. Well, that's 
And how is it done? You have the you have model space of local systems. This each local system is given by some gluing matrices. And you kind of you have your surface, you have a local system, and each triangle uh, kind of triangulated, and then in each triangle you have some cocycle. This way this in the group, and then you have sorry, you have some cocycles on the group corresponding to topological, corresponding to characteristic classes. Characteristic classes are classes in uh, B H two K of B G. And B G can can be computed computed as a simplicial scheme. So you have a point, you have a G, you have G times G. And you apply uh, uh, the the RAM complex. You have the RAM complex of a point, the RAM complex of of, um, of the group. So I have a picture like this point G times G G times G omega two and well uh, that's Kind of goes this way, right? And then here, this there is a simplicial scheme structure. So you have uh, uh, two maps here, three maps here, given by the projection, two projections and the composition. And then there is four maps here. And then by pullback, you will get maps like this. So you have this double complex. And, and then these elements here give you some terms in the double complex. And then you choose those representatives in case in specific graphical forms. And then you can see how to hook up for a real like some form of the space of work system. I don't know. But, uh, for instance, H4 is given by form sitting here. It is a two form on G times G. Which you know how to. Do you want more details? Or? <laughs> so you are uh, you are you, you are saying that the way to put that in the in the FK, right? Yes, and, and then in the parabolic case you should see what changes. And then you can prove that. Some similar, yeah. Okay, and maybe we can do that for individual consultation. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I don't know if you have more to say that one. Well, I um I don't know what what kind of other steps I skipped. Yeah, okay, then maybe stop here. Okay, we'll just take the question. Yeah, I think that's it.
and um, it was still like two seconds. Mm -hmm.